Designing and controlling distillation columns is very complicated, and there are several considerations that a chemical engineer needs to, to account for when we are figuring out what kind of, how big of a distillation column we're going to want to go with, how many trays we're going to need, what parameters do we want to take into account when we're building controllers to operate our process. And so what I'm going to do in this video is introduce uh, a common distillation model in which we're going to be manipulating the distillate flow rate, the liquid flow rate, as well as the reboiler duty. And um, we're going to be examining how uh, the reflux ratio that we decide to go with will impact the number of trays that we need. And so to begin with, I've drawn to the left here a distillation column uh, along with some controllers. And so what you'll note is that we have, uh, we're using a lot of valves in this simplified model. And the purpose of these valves is that we can manipulate the distillate flow rate that comes out uh, at the top of our column, uh, as well as the liquid that we're going to send back down our column and the reboiler duty uh, that will be required, which is commonly uh, steam condensing. And when the steam condenses, it the vapor gives off its thermal energy uh, into our bottoms tray and this will supply energy to our system. And so these are the key parameters we're dealing with. Uh, typically the feed flow rate or the feed concentration uh, will, may be some kind of disturbance variable. We don't exactly know all the time what kind of uh, feed composition we're gonna be working with. So we have to have a system that can handle and respond to perturbations in these kinds of inputs. Um, but that's a discussion for another day. And so to move on with this example, what you'll note is how uh, we are going to be manipulating the, a lot of our manipulations are occurring in the top part of our distillation column in the condenser. Uh, we, by changing the LC, the level controller, um, or the liquid going back down our um, distillation column, we are impacting the reflux ratio. And commonly, we're going to be running a process in which we need to be creating product at a constant rate. And our product is going to be existing in this distillate stream D. So commonly, we want to hold D constant to make, sorry, product Uh, at a constant rate. And so um, the reflux ratio is defined to be how much you send back down your column divided by uh, your distillate going out or the distillate flow rate going out. So if we had a reflux ratio of zero, we're not sending anything back down our column. And if we had a distillation or a reflux ratio that is very large, it means that we are taking very little out or and or uh, we are sending a lot back down our column. And so when we are determining what kind of reflux ratio we're going to be operating with, um, it helps to take a step back and look at the mccabe teeley diagrams that uh, we've become familiar with. And these mccabe teeley diagrams uh, consist of a stripping line and a rectifying line here. And the slope of these lines is directed or dictated by the reflux ratio that we have decided to go with in our process. And determining this reflux ratio is contingent upon a number of factors, arguably one of the most important of which is the size of the column and the number of trays that we have to work with, because in the real world, each tray will not only cost more money to buy, but will also cause our distillation tower to become taller. And the taller our distillation column gets, the greater uh, the amount of money we're gonna have to spend to support this column with additional support mechanisms and structures. So um, there are times in which we only have so many trays to work with and we have to make the most of them. So our reflux ratio will depend on the number of trays that we can physically work with in practice. 
And so to give an example of how the number of trays is impacting our considerations, um, if we examine a case in which we had a low reflux ratio in which we're sending very little back down our column and we're trying to maximize our distillate flow rate, um, this comes at the cost of hurting our final uh, composition or the concentration, the purity of the product that exists in our distillate flow rate. Um, and this is easily visualized through these diagrams because let's say we only had three um, stages to play with in our distillation column due to physical constraints, for instance. Uh, so in this case, what we would find is that if we, our feed would enter at this point here, or so our feed tray would exist um, at tray two, but um, what we would find if we were to determine what the composition of each tray was, was that we would just barely get, and we would fail to get to like our desired uh, composition. And I apologize for the how messy this is, but um, what we see is that operating at a low reflux ratio means that we get uh, less separation of product at each tray. And what we'll find is that as we um, move to higher reflux ratios, uh, our operating lines, the stripping and rectifying lines, uh, change slope and consequently we get far better separations at each tray in this case we only needed two trays uh, to get to our desired composition um, i should make note that on these plots the y-axis denotes y which is the uh, notation for the molar ratio of your uh, component of interest in your vapor phase and X is the liquid mole ratio of your component of interest. Um, and so what we see from our plots is that we need fewer trays at higher reflux ratios. Now, what you might ask at this point is if at higher reflux ratios we get better separation then why not just operate at the highest reflux ratio we possibly can and the thing to now account for is but more reflux requires more energy and energy in a distillation column is supplied in our reboiler here, this Q sub R term. And so um, if we do operate at higher reflux ratios, we do so at the cost of having to supply more energy into our column because now we've got more moles and mass of stuff we have to heat up that's circulating around in our distillation column. So um, to maintain the same kind of uh, temperatures that we need to have these extractions uh, or separations occurring, we need to supply more energy. And this commonly comes in the form of steam and you'll be condensing steam inside your reboiler to get the kind of compositions you want. Um, but this is a major consideration um, for chemical engineers in practice. And another point that I'd like to make is that if we have light gases present, um, Sometimes you will find that we will have a second distillate exiting our condenser, and this will be denoted um, D sub G. And so if we had methane or hydrogen present in our feed going into our distillation column, and we wanted to purge those, or if they were valuable products that we wanted to be able to uh, extract and recycle through a reactor upstream, um, we could do that at this point, and we would uh, typically have some kind of valve to control the flow rate um, of our distillate streams as well. And so um, another point is we want to have the most control over our processes we can. And so it's very common in practice. You will find uh, there's no need to try to simplify 
then and have one controller control all of your streams it's best to have one controller assigned to each stream and you will have some kind of pid controller and it will be trying to um, be provide a response to some perturbation um, about a set point and so uh, this concludes a general introduction to distillation column uh, design and control um, talking about the kind of considerations we need to account for I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.